Hey everybody and welcome back to Just Faith and Faith where I am Faith and we're talking about faith. So I posted, listen to me, I posted my introduction video to this channel and I was super on fire about it because I had another video already planned, edited, just ready to publish on the internet for this channel. But when I tell you that introduction, it was just like the enemy was like, oh, she's serious when she said she was going to start talking about God. Let me fight her real quick. The level of warfare that broke out in my life after that video, I was like, number one, God, clearly I'm on the right path because ain't no way all this hell done broke out just because of this. And number two, this just reassures me. I am that girl from the city of St. Louis, the heart of North St. Louis. I ain't never been scared from a fight. I ain't never backed down from nothing. So with that being said, we are back here today to talk about something I think everybody can relate to. And that is disappointment. When life disappoints you, crushes you, leaves you in your most broken, most vulnerable place, and you're left to pick up the pieces and keep on moving. That is something that I've dealt with recently. Um, and that is, I, I want to share more about the healing process with you all. For those that don't know me, first of all, hi, my name is Faye. I'm a beauty, health, and lifestyle content creator by the screen name Faye in the City, primarily on YouTube, but I'm on other platforms as well. Uh, but a few months ago, I announced my divorce. And while, let, let me say this, while I will be talking about the divorce in this video just to paint a clearer picture for you all so y'all can understand just how good God is and how much of a healer he really is. Be clear, this is number one, not a divorce recovery channel, not a breakup channel, not a heartbroken channel. This is a channel to let you see number one, you're not alone and number two, God is good no matter what. So I'll be sharing a lot of things about life, not just the breakup. So please know I ain't gonna be one of the ones that you can look at and be like, oh girl, you dragging. But I do want to have a safe space to talk about this process because I know I shared a little bit but I didn't really get into the actual process that God took me through to get me to where I am today which is the most healed most peaceful version of myself there's no animosity or malice in my heart towards anybody and those that watch my vlogs know that even though he and I didn't work out romantically our ill feelings are not there we have been able to put everything to the side for the best interest of our child and literally only God listen to me only God can do a thing like that so in this video I'm gonna paint a clearer picture about our story how we met all of that so you can get like the true weight of the disappointment that I dealt with and then I'm gonna tell you how God was able to heal my broken heart and just honestly put me in a position where I wouldn't trade shoes with nobody baby I love my life so anyway let's get into it because although my disappointment may have been a divorce and the breaking up of my family other people have other disappointments which could be they are dealing with some issues in their health or someone they love is dealing with issues in their health a financial struggle somebody struggling with addiction there are so many other things that in life can be a disappointment so let's just talk about it and let's heal together so before I tell you how I got where I am, let's take you back. So the year is 2015 and I'm at church. Mind you, at this point in my life, a few months prior to that, I had gone through a breakup with this guy. I was on again, off again, on again, off with a hot mess, right? So I'm in the place where I'm finally like, okay, God, it's just me and you. I would kick it with my family and friends just to have like a fulfilling life. But overall, I was just focusing on growing in God. I wasn't thinking about nobody's son coming in to stress me out, honey. So anyway, I was honestly, truly content in my singleness. And one Sunday, this guy show up to church. And I noticed, because I was on the stage doing praise and worship at the time, I noticed he was attractive because I, I could see him walk in. But here's the thing. I don't ever want to feel like I'm competing for somebody, right? And if you know anything about church culture, when a new man show up and he don't have a ring on his finger, the woman may be flocking to him. And so that is something that I noticed immediately. And I was like, absolutely not. Uh, so many women were asking him and showing him attention. And I just, I don't ever want to feel like I'm one of many vying for your attention. I want to be the one of one that you see something in me and like, let me pursue her because at the end of the day, is he that fine? So I ain't finna compete for you, whether it's in real life or social media. I don't do that. I let you see me and then you come to me. But anyway, what I didn't know at the time that I found out in the marriage was he noticed that out of all the women, I always avoided him. I would never come speak to him. I would never talk to him. None of that. And he said they got his attention because he was like, oh, she playing hard to get. 
I wasn't playing hard to get. I don't play mind games. Ain't no 48 laws of power with me. None of that. I just wasn't interested because if I got to compete to get you, I got to compete to keep you. And I ain't finna do all that. And so I remember one Sunday, it was a part of the service where we go up and greet somebody and tell them they said that you love them. And so I'm on this side of the sanctuary. He on this side. He walks all the way around, bypasses everybody and comes and hugs me. And it caught me off guard because I'm like, you wasn't even over here. Why, why are you in my face? And so it caught my attention, but I moved on. And then over time, I did notice him. And his cousin was the reason that he came to the church. And I ended up telling her that I thought he was attractive. And I remember saying verbatim, I ain't trying to push up on him. I just think he cute. Well, evidently, he thought the same thing. She ran it together. And uh, she ended up telling me he wanted my information. We exchanged information. Fast forward to 2018. Well, actually, no, let me not fast forward because I need y'all to understand the, the weight of this devastation. Now, mind you, I wasn't thinking about nobody's son when he came into my life. And I prayed multiple times, God, if he is not the one, get this man away from me. But the more and more I tried to pray him away, the closer and closer he came. Now, I remember it was one day I get a message on Facebook from a girl. We have a friendly rapport, but we hadn't seen each other in years. And I'm the type of person when it comes to relationships, I'm not posting you on social media if we are not absolutely exclusive where we had that conversation where we like, okay, this is it. And so nobody knew I was talking to him except for like my mama because she had met him. So uh, I get this message in the middle of the night and this girl tells me, that she had a dream about it. Sister, I had a dream about you. You were married to some dark brown skinned cute man and y'all had a cute little baby. Y'all lived either in South St. Louis on the, or the Southern part of the county. But you guys had a nice place and a really nice SUV. Me and my boo came to visit at the dream. And I told her, you have no idea how much confirmation that was. I'm currently involved with a dark skinned dude who lives in on the south side uh, and I've been back and forth because I wasn't sure and I've been praying for a sign. Thank you sis. What she didn't know at the time I had just got an SUV and so everything she was saying was aligning with what was going on with my life and there's no way she would have known this except God. So when I got that message that's what caused me to let my guard down with him because that that to me was one of the signs but even with the prophetic right. I know that, yeah, I may get that from you, but I believe that it should be a confirmation of something that God has given me. And I also should hear from God myself. And so after that, I started having dreams and God confirmed that he was the one. And 2018, we get married. So it's 2018, we get married and I noticed things get rocky in 2019. And then in 2020, it was a hot mess. And I was like, Lord, now nah, I didn't let this man in my life. Uh, just for no reason. I believe you called us together. But the life that we live in right now, this this ain't, something ain't right. Something ain't right. Um, and at this point in time, we had moved away from my support system. We had moved away from my church. We moved away from community. So it was just he and I. So when things did get hot between us, we didn't have any support around. So we ended up coming back to St. Louis to have that support. But so much had happened that it was hard to get back on the right track. And I'm fighting because I'm like, Lord, you promised, like, th this was you. I know this was you. I didn't make that up. She didn't make that up. I know this was your will. Why is this not working? And then eventually, you know, I have the baby. Like, things were, they had got on, on track for, for a little bit. But then the issues that we dealt with previously came back up. And I'm like, Lord, something going to have to give. And I tried. I gave it the fight of my life because I was like, forget just fighting for the marriage i'm fighting for the promise that god gave me i know god you said he was it why is this not working and i did everything i knew to do uh, i got pastors involved i got counselors involved i was in therapy i was doing everything i could to save my marriage when i say i fought for that thing i fought to save my marriage but we couldn't get it right um, and I, I, I can't get into more personal information just because he and I have a promise to each other that out of respect for our son, there's certain things we'll never make public. So I, I can't really get into the details, but just know that there were some issues going on that uh, that needed to be addressed and it just it never got fixed. And so here it is. I got the family I prayed for, the baby that I 
finally received after years of infertility. I got it. And my world is crumbling apart because of everything that I wanted more than anything is being taken away. So I'm five months postpartum. Got a five month old baby and I'm single. That was the most heartbreaking thing, especially because the whole reason I even gave him a shot was because I believed it to be the will of God. Now I will say this, what I know now is, let's talk Bible. Israel was God's people, right? They didn't have a king. They had prophets, but they didn't have a king. And they like, oh, we want a king, we want a king. Everybody around us got a king, we want a king. And God like, no, you don't need that. And they're like, we want one, we want one. And so God said, okay, you want one here. This is who I am trusting to lead you. His name is Saul. And so God puts him in his position and he's king, right? But here's the thing. You can be in the position that God called you to. You can be in the place God wants you to be. You could be the man that God chose for the job. But if you turn around and walk in disobedience and you dishonor God in the place that he called you to, God will not allow his people to suffer because you are disobedient. What he will do is disqualify you, remove you, and replace you. But no matter the case, the, the place in my heart that I had was, God, I am disappointed that you allowed this heartbreak to come to me. My body is not even fully healed from giving birth to this baby. And now here I am moving into a house alone, preparing to... to for a whole different life that I never saw coming. Like I knew we had issues, but I never thought it would get to the point where it would actually become a divorce. And so I was very disappointed because I was like, God, you know my beginning from my ending. You knew that this was going to happen and you allowed it. And for that reason, I am upset with you. So I still maintain a prayer life concerning my son, like God protect him and I will pray for other people. But as far as maintaining faith in God for myself, it no longer existed because the one thing that I believe God for crumbled. Not only did the marriage crumble, but no matter how hard I fought to save it, it didn't work. I prayed and I fasted so much, okay? I leaned into everything that I knew to fight for what I wanted and it just didn't work. And so I didn't want to talk to God at all. And so with that, I got into the darkest place of my life, period. Outside the death of an actual relative, I've never been this low in my life and if it were not for my son and this is just me being totally honest okay if it were not for my son I don't know if I would still be here because I was that hurt that those things happened to me okay I experienced a lot and I'm like Lord this ain't fair and so I was in the lowest place of my life I had no faith for myself I would pull myself together enough to mother my child, but that was it. And then I still was a content creator. I'm like, I still, like, I was okay, but I still needed to make money. So I still would make content. So I would pull myself enough together to get on camera. But other than that, y'all, all I did was cry. I remember my baby first Christmas, all of that. All I did was cry. My mama had to come get me. Like, she had to come sit with me because I was so broken, y'all. All I did was just lay in her arms and cry because that's all I could do. It would be days where she had to get my baby because I was just that far gone. I'd be like, Mama, and I thank God for her. I would call and say, Mama, I'm not myself right now. I just need a moment to get myself together. Can you come get her? And she would drop everything and get my child so I could get myself together. So when I tell y'all I was so broken, not just because I was heartbroken, but because I had lost faith in God. Life was a mess for me, right? And so, uh, I waited a while before I actually went through with the legal process because I still, even though we both had decided enough was enough, a part of me still had hope that it would come together and it just never did. And so finally, once I saw that this was really it, I went ahead and did what I had to do. And that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And I was the lowest I'd ever been. And I remember I just did not have the strength to pray. I ain't had the strength to do nothing, y'all. I didn't have it in me. And so life was just a mess. But eventually the day came where everything changed. And so I'm going to tell you how 
God brought me out of that lowness and gave me a life that I could not imagine. Okay, honey, I have to go get something to get myself together. I'm tired of getting on the internet crying. But anyway, let's talk about the recovery process. So let's rewind. I told y'all I used to be a youth pastor. I used to be heavy in ministry. And the one thing that I would do on a regular basis is fast. Um, I'm going to do a whole separate video about consecrating and things like that. But I used to fast a lot because my thing was I don't like nothing fake at all, especially not in ministry. And my, th my standpoint was, okay, God, if you are real, and the Bible says greater works shall we do. I want to see the greater works. So let me get myself in position for you to be able to use me. So I used to fast a lot. So what ended up happening in that process was God gave me a covenant friendship. Think in the Bible, there was David and Jonathan. She and I was David and Jonathan together. And so she and I used to fast together. And what would happen was we would come together for a time and then life would just pull us apart. We wouldn't be falling out. It's just like we would be getting busy. And I now know that it was God. And so we would come together, separate, come together, separate, come together, separate. But every time we came together, it never fell in the midst of the coming together. One of us will hear from God and be like, God told me it's time to fast. And another one would be like, no, I don't want to, no, I don't want to. But we would always come together. So. Fast forward to I'm in this most broken place that I've ever been. I'm not talking to God. I don't want nothing to do with him, honey. And so she calls me because, mind you, I still have a little baby. And, again, we would come together, some separate, come together, separate. While I was pregnant, she bought some things from the baby, and it came in two different orders. And so one order she brought to me while I was still pregnant. But then, for some reason, we stopped talking again. Life just got busy. And... I am at this point, I think I'm like eight months postpartum. And this is the first time we talking. And she called me. She was like, girl, I was cleaning the house. I found some of the bibs that I ordered for the baby. I need to get them to you. So I go over to her house. We just talking, catching up on life. And that's it. Then out of the clear blue sky, a couple days later, she tells me, Faye, I'm on a fast. And I want to hang up immediately because I know what's coming next. And I'm like, I don't fool with God like that. What you mean stop eating? I ain't finna do that. And so I'm ignoring her. And then I start going off because she's still pushing the issue. And she's laughing because she know what's finna happen next. And so fast forward. Basically, I had the day where I was just like, okay, God, I don't want to. I have no desire to get to like be close to you again. I have no desire for this. However, even I'm starting to feel like I need to fast. Now, mind you, I am broken. I am low. My faith is exhausted. I am depressed. I am crying all the time. But for some reason, I feel in my spirit, I need to fast. And so, like, I used to go straight, like, no food whatsoever, just liquids. But right then and there, I didn't feel like I had the strength for that, especially with the aftermath that comes from that. Y'all, I'm going to do a totally separate video about, like, what comes with fasting. Like, trust me, you need to be educated before you just jump off the deep end. And so I was just like, I don't have the strength for an absolute fast. I'll do a Daniel's fast. Now, to some people, they say that ain't a fast. It's just like a little consecration. Ain't a bit. Listen, I don't care what you think. For me, that's what I chose to do. So I'm broken. My faith is exhausted, but I give this one last try to God. I don't even want to talk to him. I don't want to pray. It's real hard for me to pray. Real hard for me to pray because I'm like, you allowed the worst situation I've ever experienced to happen in my life. Why should I be talking to you? But I decided to give God this one try. So I did a Daniel's fast. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically like a vegan diet. And so I did it. And when I first started, I felt absolutely nothing. I felt like I was going through the motions. And I remember I talked to her about it because anytime I fast and I always make sure somebody is covering me in prayer because like I said, it's a lot that goes with fasting. So I talked to her about it and, and she kept me encouraged. She kept in touch with me. Um, and then one day something shifted and I finally was able to hear God's voice for myself again. And I was like, wait, so you, after all the main things I said to you, you didn't abandon me? And so I said, okay, let's let's take this a little farther and see how this goes. So I continue on my fast. And the more and more I'm fasting, now I'm starting to pray. And as I'm starting to pray, I'm starting to hear God's voice in my life again. And I'm like, okay, let me turn this up a notch. And so I'm really starting to like get some strength and put some stamina behind this thing. And God started directing me. And he told me clear as day why the marriage has to come, in, come to the end that it did. And having an answer is honestly what brought me peace. It doesn't take away the pain of what I experienced, 
but knowing that there was still purpose in the pain helps me to have peace. And so once that came, I was like, okay, I'm not happy that it happened, but I understand. And so that really helped to shift me. But the biggest thing that helped me was community. Being by myself in this, that was my demise. But having someone around that's like, we're not going to let you fall off by yourself. We're going to pray for you. And that was my friend that I do the fasting with. And as well as my pastor, he kept his hand on me. And just having people around that really were invested in my well-being, that helped a lot. And that gave me the strength to fight for my own destiny. Because, yeah, other people can pray for you, but there is a certain responsibility that you have in your own healing process and in telling your own story that you have to take for yourself. If you keep rehearsing the bad parts of what happened to you, you're going to stay in that place. But you have to come to a conclusion where you're like, okay, I can't stay here. And it took me fasting to come to the conclusion I can't stay here. My son deserves better than me crying all the time. I deserve better than me crying all the time. So I need to heal. So for me, that looked like going to therapy because yes, you can serve the Lord and have help too. The same way if you have migraines repeatedly, you end up going to the doctor and taking whatever they say, you can talk to a therapist as well. Amen. You need help. And so I went to a therapist. I started working out because I found that whenever I started feeling anxiety in my body and just really anxious and tense, moving around helped to relieve some of that. And then like even the hormonal shifts that happen happens when you work out. I don't know if it's serotonin, but as you are moving around, it does help you feel better. And then, like I said, fasting and praying really did bring me back to life. And the more and more I fasted and prayed, the more and more I felt God getting closer to me, the more and more my peace was restored. And once I made the decision, okay, God is still with me. I will not fail and I will not stay in this pit. And I started doing active work, which looked for me like remaining connected to community, staying in therapy, working out, and choosing not to rehearse the negative that I experienced, but choosing to believe that better was coming. Day by day, I felt my joy coming back. I felt my peace coming back. And with time, one day I looked up and I was like, I didn't cry today. And that to me was a miracle because majority of all of 2022, I cried every single day because of what I was going through. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people can relate to. Maybe yours wasn't a divorce. Maybe it was some other catastrophe that caught you off guard in life or you just like this. I didn't want this. Or maybe it was something that you prayed for and you didn't get the answer that you wanted. It's like this. I didn't want this. We all deal with situations in life that can leave us crushed and disappointed and the thing that I love about God is he is so merciful that he's not an egomaniac that cannot understand the Bible even tells us Jesus understands and I don't believe that God doesn't allow us to question him I think that he won't allow us to disrespect him but I don't see there being anything wrong with questioning God why because it was me questioning why that God finally gave me the answer that my heart needed to give me peace but God is so good and so understanding that he understands that we get hurt and that we cry and that there are things in life that will overwhelm us and knock us completely off our feet, knock the wind out of our lungs. But he is so good that he restores. I think of the story of Job where he lost so, so much, but at the end of it, God restored. And there are so many other situations in life where it's just like, this sucks, okay? My heart is broken. I am sick or I am dealing with this or I'm bearing somebody else's burdens. We all go through a season where life will leave us disappointed. But the good thing is we don't have to stay there. I will never tell you to ignore your emotions because that is unhealthy in itself. Even Jesus cried when Lazarus died. If Jesus can express his emotions, who am I to think that I cannot? So I don't think there's anything wrong with being upset. I don't think there's anything wrong with being sad. I don't think it's anything wrong with acknowledging your disappointment. But the thing that I would encourage you to know is you do not have to stay there. I am a living witness because I have so many reasons where I could be bitter. I have so many reasons where I could lash out. I have so many reasons. Listen to me. If I really started talking and turned into a, uh, listen, this could be a totally different way, but I have chosen to allow peace in my heart. I have chosen to allow forgiveness in my heart. 
I have chosen to allow God to be the healer of a broken heart. I have chosen to allow God to give me peace that surpasses all understanding. I have chosen to allow God to give me joy unspeakable and full of glory. And most importantly, I have chosen to be more than a conqueror because that's the thing that God has said that I could have and I chose to receive it. Now, was there a process to get there? Yes. But have I finally reached a place of peace in my life? Absolutely. And I pray the same for you. So just know life gonna disappoint you. It disappoints all of us. But at the same time, God is truly a healer and you can be all right too. So I do feel led to pray for those who are currently dealing with not just a broken heart, but just feeling disappointed or have been dealt a blow that life has pretty much thrown at you that knocked your faith out of place. Um, and and y'all know I'm a Christian, so I'll be talking to Jesus chat. But I do want to pray for you if you are someone that is currently where I was, where life just feels dark and you don't know how you're going to go on. Or if I'm being honest, if you even want to go on, because I felt that too. If that is you, let's pray together real quick. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity for us to gather together, even if it is just online, just to acknowledge you. God, I acknowledge that you are sovereign. And even when we don't understand, God, your sovereignty is based in your goodness, God. So we ask you to forgive us for the times that we have doubted you, where we have looked at you as if you were not who you truly are, which is a good, good father. You are Abba Father. God, we ask you to forgive us for all sins in every place of unrighteousness that will cause you to be disappointed in us, God. And we thank you for grace and mercy and that we thank you that you are a restorer and that you give us no condemnation, that we are free and free indeed. And as we're gathered together right now, if there's anybody who happens to come across this video that is heartbroken, I ask that you begin to speak to them, that you soften their heart and let them see that you are still nigh unto them, that they have never been left and they have never been forsaken. God, if there's anyone who sees this and they are sick and they are questioning your healing power, I ask that you stand strong on today, that you be Jehovah Rapha, the healer that they need, Lord God. By your stripes, they've already been healed. Get, let it be manifested in the earth realm, Jesus. If there's anyone here who happens to be dealing with depression God even that is not too strong for you we ask that you speak to him in the midnight hour that you turn away the enemy and let no weapon formed against them prosper God I lose peace to everybody that sees this video. I lose joy unspeakable in that it be full of glory, God. I ask that you give them a testimony that brings you glory that they are able to say, I don't know how and I don't know why, but God did that thing and he blew my mind. I, I ask you for joy, God. I ask you for peace and that you lift the bow down head. I thank you for everybody that sees this and I thank you that a good story will come from all of it because he that began a good work will perform. God, continue to perform. God, I ask that you just be who you are, which is good, which is healer, which is the lifter of a bow down head, that you give us more than conquering graces, oh God. God, I thank you for a testimony that is to come. And I ask that everyone that see this, just feel your love and be overwhelmed by your joy and let them know that most importantly, that they are not alone, that even in the darkest hour that you are with them, if they choose to make their bed in hell, you be there with them too. God, be the father that we all need. And I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that your glory will be revealed revealed in each and every one of us. I thank you for a good testimony and I give you praise in advance for everything that you're going to do. And I ask that you blindside us all with your goodness, your grace, and your love. And it's in Jesus name I pray. Amen. So to anybody that sees this, if you are in a low place, just know I've been there too. I know what it's like to doubt God. I know what it's like to feel like God ain't hearing your prayers. And I know what it's like to feel like I don't even want to pray. But just know I stand here as a testimony before you today that God can do the impossible because for me to stand here in peace and love and and just for me to still be here is a miracle in itself and I pray that same miracle on you so with that being said that is it for me um I love each and every one of y'all and I don't just say that for the sake of saying it I truly truly love y'all and just know that I am continuing to pray for each and every one of y'all so if y'all have any questions leave them down below I love y'all Mikey Dada and I'm out this piece bye Y'all go in peace, for real. Go in peace.